Oh my goodness, baby. How did the song go again? Who can? Who can I run to? Girl, I know you got to be asking yourself that, Miss Latasha Scott. Hey guys, thanks so much for clicking on the video. As you can see the title, Who Can I Run To? That's the song, right? That's the escape song. It's one of the big ones. And I know that Latasha Scott at this point has got to be asking herself that question daily. Who can I run to to fill this empty space when I done screwed everything pretty much up? Listen. I'm going to wrap all this up in a nice little pretty little bow. I have so many thoughts about Latasha Scott and what we've actually seen go on here over these last few months. What's, had, what's played out as far as the Escape in SWV show on Bravo Network. Um, all of the stuff that has gone on on social media. And then the, pay, the, 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 the Big Bang was Good Friday when her album released. So this should have been a turnaround of it. This is, should have been the part where it all made sense, where it all paid off, where it's like, okay, well, I went through all of this, but I got that, but it didn't quite work out that way. Didn't quite work out that way. The sales on the album are less than favorable from what I'm seeing. Um, I've looked at the music. I've looked at the music. Eh. No. And, and the more I look, the more I see kind of why you did what you did. Yeah, we're going to talk about all of it, Miss Latasha. I got a lot to say, baby. I'm, I feel really bad for Tasha. I do. I feel bad because it, it just, this is just not good. This is not good. But again, when you work in evil spaces, I don't know why you expect good outcomes. But anyway, so listen, let's talk about Latasha. And the last thing I seen Latasha do was she, you know, we've had all of the drama. The last thing I seen her do, she was blaming everything on the edit. I said, Lord, not this, honey. Blame it on the edit. We, You can't blame anything on the edit. Everybody knows that when it comes to reality TV, everybody is past all of that. That foolishness. No one goes for that anymore. Everybody knows better. You can't get any more than what is given. You can't. You can't get what is not put out. If you don't act a fool, they can't make you look a fool. They can only take clips of you acting a fool and make you look a fool. If you're acting like you got good sense, they can't make you look like you're acting a fool. It's what you put out. It's what you put out. Your storyline was a storyline of your family being a mess, of thievery within the family, breakup within the family, breakup within the group. I mean, come on. You didn't put anything out in that show that was positive. Everything around you was negative. So the only message that they could actually push forth would be a negative one. So to blame it on the edit, chow. Uh, Shut up, you junkie it doesn't make sense. It does not make sense. And then to come at Mona Scott Young and the production company and saying that they edited to make you look a certain type of way. No. Because even when the show was playing out, baby, you came down on social media and you and your sister went back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, dropping receipts, treating each other like broads from off the street, dragging each other and carrying on. And your husband looked like the puppet master. All while all of it was going on. It was shade, shade, and more shade. Truly, truly shade. It was terrible. It was terrible. And the more the show went on, the worse it looked. The worse it looked, the more we went on. 
I said, okay, well, you know, whatever, however you want to do it. But anyway, so I thought that was completely ridiculous. That was the last thing that I had seen. And then I said, let me go concentrate on this music and see what's going on. So the music, the music looks as though you were trying to walk that fine line. You try to walk that fine line. Is this actual gospel music? Let's hang right there for a second. Is this gospel music? Because what it looks like to me is that that fine line that certain people walk, but there's only certain people that can walk it. Mary Mary, Kirk Franklin. They they walk those little lines. Kirk Franklin took Patrice Russian. And I've been looking for you. And changed it up through God's name in it a little bit. And then there we go. Now we got a gospel song. Mary Mary walks the fine line all the time. We know that their intent is gospel. But it's very much the songs, if you switch it around in a way, it's straight up R&B. Straight up R&B. You could do that. BB and CC Winans were able to walk that fine line where you'd be like, well, wait a minute. Is this a gospel song? There's certain people that could do it. But Tasha, come on. I'm going to concentrate on this song here. Afraid. Mm -mm. That's an R&B song. Quit playing. Quit playing. Don't play in my face. It's an R&B song, and you literally threw God help me in there as a few lines. Just saying God's name or saying God help me does not make a gospel song. You could do a song that is gospel driven that doesn't even mention his name whatsoever. Whatsoever. I learned to respect the power of love. Very much written from a gospel place. Stephanie Mills took it and did it in an R&B form. But when it was written originally by Angela Wimbush, she was really coming from a gospel place and a gospel heart and a full-on heart for God when she sat down and wrote that song. Again, music is all interpretation. I'm going to use Angel Wimbush while I'm sitting right there. The song, Your Smile. A lot of people don't even realize that song. They think that is a love song. It's a love note, but it's not a love song. It was written as a love note. Angela Wimbush was writing about her grandmother. But most people don't even realize that. Most people think that she was writing about Renee. Her and Renee were not a couple. They were friends. They were friends. She wasn't writing that song about no man. That song was written about her. It was a love note to her grandmother. So it's really all interpretation. I write it to be one thing. You can interpret it another way. But this whole tongue in cheek, I'm going to throw God's name in a couple times. The, the song Afraid is an R&B song, and I wouldn't give a goddamn what you say. And then you went into this video, which is a very pretty video. It's a very pretty video. And, and I mean, you can't, some things you can't take away. You can sing, mama. You can sing. And you look gorgeous in the video. You do. But Everything about that video is a get back. Everything about that video is you throwing shade. Everything about that video is wrapped in drama and controversy of what you have had go on in the public eye. And that has nothing to do with gospel music whatsoever. You marketed it to the R&B fans. You marketed it to the social media fans. That ain't marketed to the church. That is not marketed to the church. Now, quit playing. The video opens up. You got on that dress that had all of the controversy where you went to an award show and you wore a completely different color and a different style than the rest of the group, the girl group that you were in, Escape. 
So you start the video off in that dress. We already know where you're going. I said, child, as soon as I seen you in the dress, I said, Lord have mercy. Listen, the shame has been threatened. And what does that have to do with the church? That has nothing to do with the church. Nothing. Then, right in as the video starts, it's news and media clips of the drama between you and your sister, you and your husband, you and the group. Again, where's God in any of that? Chow. Over somebody else's house, trying to get their stuff together. You over there on your own on the island with that mess. And that's what it was. It was a mess. Pretty mess, but mess nonetheless. I sat and I watched that video. I said, this is a pretty song, but it ain't got nothing to do with nothing gospel. It ain't got no business on no gospel album. This ain't nothing but an R&B record. So let's talk about that a little bit. Motown Gospel. I had never heard of the company until the reality show. Once the reality show came about, okay, now here we go with Motown Gospel. That's cool. I go when I watch the very first scene where they come in, they know that you're there on that bullshit. You come in on the bullshit. You are telling them, Yeah, I'm part of a girl group, which you didn't have to tell them that. Everybody knows about you and escape. That's why they took the meeting. They know who you are. You weren't just some Joe Schmo from off the street, but you come straight in the door telling them how you basically are planning to sign with them possibly and leave your group. That's what you were going to give the group. You were going to smack them around and go on about your business. This is what you're sitting down with this gospel company. So right away, me watching that, I kind of started side-eyeing and lose the respect that I didn't even have for this new company of Motown Gospel. It's Motown. So, of course, I was on board. Then when I seen that, I said, Chow, please. Anyway, on to the next. On to the next. I said, okay, cool. Watch you go on with what it was that you were doing. You carried on. You said what you had to say in that meeting with them. They turned around. They were on board. I said, they full of mess too. What church is this that's welcoming all this drama? What church is welcoming all that drama? None. None that I know of. Don't make very much sense to me. But I said, okay, carry on. They brought it on in. I want to know right now, Motown, Motown Gospel, do you regret it? Do you regret getting together with Tasha? See, y'all are under contract now. So y'all got to try to work it out. But I can't even imagine. I can't even imagine. Everything about Latasha Scott at this point is everything other than what the church, the black church, is supposed to be about. Everything surrounding her is stealing, forgery, breaking laws, right within your own family, stealing from your own family member, and money, and greed. Then you got your marriage. That thing is 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 weird, you know. We're we're looking at it, people. The court of public opinion that your husband is basically running you into the ground and leading you the wrong way. He leading you to do things and pulling you away from the people that you love, pulling you away from the people that you love and doing the bidding that he tells you to do. Then y'all out there talking about. They said he didn't cheat it. Maybe there's some babies or something going around. All of this is the complete opposite of what the black church is supposed to be pumping out. Then it's supposed to be an open marriage. You talked about that all out in the public. Then you come back and you backpedal and you pussy pop. And then you say, oh, no, it's an open conversation. Anytime you backpedal and the pussy pop, it, there's an underlining lie. So is that what we're doing down to the black church? Are we dealing with lies now? No, the black church ain't about all that. And family turmoil in the black community is completely 
against what the black church is trying to pump out in 2023. And then your album is named A Conversation with God. Did you have one? Did you have one during, before, or even after you finished this album? I just want to know. I'm just asking for a friend. Then you come up and the sales aren't the best. I wasn't surprised. Were you? So again, I want to ask Motown Gospel, do you regret your affiliation with Latasha Scott? Latasha Scott, are you regretting your affiliation with Motown Gospel? Because see, I think it was all part of a bigger plan. I think it was really rocky. I think that husband sat down and you just did like you do and said, yeah, 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 let's do it like this. I think you decided to go into that gospel market because it's a niche market. It's a smaller market than the R&B market. You went over there, you sang basically the songs that you wanted to sing through God's name in a little bit, which is something that you would have done anyway, even when it's God, when it's uh, R&B, you would do that because it's just how you do. And you don't have to compete with the R&B girls so much. You just go over there and compete with the Kier Clark Shears of the world. And things of that nature. Going over, you probably thought in your mind because you real, real arrogant that you could compete with the Clark sisters and the BB and CC one. And the, you could compete with them on a different level because you got an R&B following but you're not over in the R&B market to have to deal with the R&B girls. See, that sound like some Rocky mess to me and sound like you were just on board with it and that you thought it would work out. Now, that's, that's what I got out of it. That's what I got out of it. But then you end up stuck. Stuck where it just don't seem to be quite working out. My thing is, who do you run to? Just like I started off this, I'm going to get up out of here, but I've said what I had to say. And my question is, girl, who, who can I run to? Who can you run to now? Looks to me like, girl, playing around with this. If things don't get better, you're going to mess around and find yourself down to the post office singing songs while processing the mail. You may want to try to start clearing things up and you may want to try to find your way back to your group, honey, with Escape. They sat up on TV and said that, girl, they always would have a space for you. I think it might be time for you to be trying to work your way back to your space before you end up sorting mail, sis. Anyway, listen, thank y'all for hanging out at my kitchen table with me. I told you I had a lot of things to say about Miss Latasha Scott. Look, I ain't got no hate. I don't wish her no ill will. It just is what it is. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Y'all have a good one. I'll see y'all later.